All right, test, 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 test. <clears throat> All right, well, one topic that we mentioned on that episode, Nick, was that mm-hmm. when uh, one of our favorite Arnold movies was T2. Yes. And the scene when... And Judgment Day. Yeah, Judgment Day. Terminator 2 or Terminator, Terminator 2? Terminator 2, okay. So when the, ro- the Terminator robot, Arnold yeah. robot, sunk into the lava yeah. or whatever it was at the yeah. end of... Not lava, whatever it was. The yeah, it was like a molten, liquid molten, hot magma. Magma. Yeah. But you said that was, man, that was one of the saddest movie it deaths was. that you remembered as a child. So It was just very emotional, even though he was a robot. You know, yeah. he was very sad. So that is our main topic this evening, you guys. We want to talk about fictional deaths, whether it be movies or TV, books, whatever it is. It, it could be a movie about a real person, but the movie sure. death impacted you or something like that. But that's our Is main topic Lincoln? tonight. Huh? <laughs> Did he die? Did not see that one coming. I did not. Did he die no. in that? Oh, my God. That was going to happen. Spoiler alert. Innocently goes to a play yeah. out of nowhere. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's our main topic tonight. So fictional or movie deaths, pop culture deaths, if you will, yep. in the, uh, that, that and impacted if you're, you. If you're one of the uh, seven people watching currently, uh, <laughs> sure. we lost three. Damn it. It was Dean's story. I, we knew we shouldn't let him talk. I know. It was a feat. It was, it was a damn <laughs> feat. <laughs> Showing his, wiggling his tail yeah. there. Yeah. But if you have any, if you have any comments Go out there, we'll, we'll pick those up. <laughs> any movie deaths or whatever that impacted you yeah. as we go. So Can I start with an ahead. obvious one? Please. Go ahead and start, sir. Uh, Mufasa. Ah, Lion King. The Lion yeah. King. And I don't even think it's necessarily like Mufasa dying. Okay. As it was, it, like the heart wrenching <laughs> thing where like baby Simba's kid, like yeah. trying to wake him up right. and yeah. pleading with him, right. wake up, Dad, get up, get up, and he's tugging on him and on his ear, and he's uh, <laughs> had to fix that before you took it and ran with it. <laughs> but he's t- tugging on his ear and he's nudging him, and he's trying to get him to you know wake up. It's just, it's still like I, I, it gets me every time. Doesn't matter how many times I, yeah. I see the Lion King, but that scene is always really rough. Yep, That's a I good agree. One. Um, uh, my mom wants to know if we remember the show ER. I do. Sure. Are, I, I are don't know you which to, one. Or... Given your name, uh, are you going to say Dr. Green? I'm, I know this is a little <laughs> lag, but Dr. She's right. Dr. Green and ER, when he died, um, that was very emotional. The guy had been on the show since the beginning. I feel like it was probably 180 seasons in, mm-hmm. but they killed him off. But the way they did it... Um, I think Michael Crichton was the creator. I, you know, obviously wasn't the writer, but the writers on TV to me give so much more than movie writers. I know it's a different dynamic, different uh, genre, mm-hmm. but TV deaths to me, I've seen more TV deaths that like punch you in the gut, like Doctor Green, and and it, I think she's gonna yes, she yep, agreed. That, Green. That's who it was. Okay. Um, it was Anthony Edwards, Goose from uh, uh, Top Gun. Top Gun. Okay, I never watched the. ER. Well, he yeah. he was Doctor Green, and and when they killed him off, once again, very sad. And that'll get me to my. I'll I'll do one because sure. we're not going to go movies. We can just, just whatever, skip just skip around. Yeah, Free flowing yeah. TV, um, NYPD Blue. Jimmy Smith's, um, uh, Detective Simone. He played De- Detective Simone on NYPD Blue, mm-hmm. and it wasn't even like a you know because it's a detective show. It's a cop show. How do you get out, get cops off a show? Kill them. Right. Yep. No. One episode in the middle of the season, like he does, you know, one of these deals and kind of falls down a little bit. He gets put in the hospital. Something's, I can't remember exactly what, but the death scene that they did, they did a whole in and out of a coma. Um, he's talking to like ghosts at a bar. Oh, jeez. And then... Um, I don't know if did you ever watch NYPD Blue? Anybody? Uh, but uh, nope. Dennis Franz in there is, was just a ridiculously great actor. That's not the bike cop one, is it? No, no, that was um, uh, that was USA R- USA, USA Network. USA. Yeah, that was something blue. Pacific, Pacific blue. blue. That's it. Sorry, that was not necessary. But 
I'm well, gonna I'm gonna take all the high fives. We don't get to be <laughs> around each other, so I it's like true. this. Uh, no, but Jimmy Smith's dying on there was. I remember watching. It was the first television show I had ever watched where I cried. Hmm. I'm in high school, like, and it was one of those where like, what a bitch. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not ashamed. Like, I'm watching, like, I'm by myself in my room just going, how the fuck is this affecting me so so bad? Like, yeah. it, it really did. I mean, obviously, if you've seen Jimmy Smith's anything, he's a fantastic actor. But Dennis Franz in it really drew the drew you over the line. Because Dennis Franz was like a, like the tough guy, the, the rugged tough guy. And to watch him and his performance in that. To me, that's the roughest one I'd ever seen. It was the first one that made me cry. Hmm. I got a TV one for you that, remember, this was a kid. And this impacted me as a kid. Uh, MASH. I know one of your your dad's favorite TV shows. So, got it right here. Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake. So yep. McLean Stevenson. McLean he was Stevens. always kind of a goofy character on the show. He was the colonel you know, before Colonel Potter. And just it was shocking he gets in a helicopter to, to to fly off base to go home to go home that's right that was the roughest part he oh shit he was and the radar comes that. in and, and announces that do you want to his, know uh, his some trivia was on shot that? down and he and he was killed huh go ahead <clears throat> okay so mclean stevens decided to leave the show yep and when he did there was no hard feelings that that's not why they killed him off they killed him off because they they said they wanted to make it so realistic that sometimes that happens yeah Sometimes just going home, the plane gets shot down. And they didn't tell the cast. The only person they told was Radar just before. Okay, interesting. They gave him the line. They just told them, you know, do the operating thing. Radar will come in. Hmm. They didn't say the McLean. They didn't say Colonel Blake had died. So they gave Radar. So when Radar walked in crying, it's because he literally was crying because the director just told him the line to say. Wow. And then all of the actors crying, 100% real reaction because they weren't expecting it. Huh, okay. Yeah, very, very, very powerful scene. That was one yes. of my first, maybe my main TV death that impacted me. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. I have a TV one. Go ahead, please. I know neither of you have watched the show, but uh, it was a very popular show. It's fucking Power Rangers. And I, <laughs> <laughs> Man, when they unplugged Zordon and like he just went away. Like, come on. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Static. That's it. No. Um, <laughs> I don't... That is probably little, real, though. Little Nick with his mullet and that little tear coming down out of his eyes. Petting it. <laughs> with my Kool-Aid mustache, petting my mullet on my shoulder. Why? Zordon. Mama, tell me it can't be true. Zordon! Ay, ay, ay. So upset. No, um... I don't... Mom's in the corner making out with me. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Get the high school boy out of here. <laughs> no boyfriends today. Um, I uh, no, there was no show that I don't like. Think did a better job or that I've ever seen of completely catching you off guard and and killing uh, main characters in the way that Game of Thrones did. Mm. Now I will say, had I read the books first. I probably I would have known that this was coming, but the way that Game of Thrones is laid out in the first book and the first season mirrors it, the what you're made to believe is the main character through the whole first season that you think this whole story is going to center around him and his family is off at the end, and he's in a situation, and at the end of the first season, you go, he's what in deep shit. Uh, Game of Thrones. When did it start? Yeah. The show 2000, or Lane was a baby, so 2010 or 11, it would probably came So out. did that kind of start the idea of, like, cable shows doing that? Because, like, Breaking Bad would do that, where, like, a, a character you thought was going to be... Oh, right, yeah. ...big, like, they'd yeah. off them. Well, but the, uh, this book... I'm watching, I'm watching Ozarks. The book was read, written in, like, the 90s, and it happened. So, I mean, they followed the book. Got so, it. like I said, if I had known that... So that kind of set the groundwork a little bit, but, you know, you, you kind of think at the end of that season... He's in deep shit, but he's like the main character. Like he's gonna, they'll figure something out. He's got a way out of this. Right. They'll, you know, they'll they'll figure something out. And I'll just never forget the feeling of like I'm like, oh my god, they actually they did it. Like it, they they actually did it. And then so after there's this, you know, they they build on that after there's this horrible death of this main character that you know was very beloved. Um, his family picks up the pieces, rallies around him. They have to fight because they're being, you know. Uh, they're being uh, vilified and chased and framed for things, so they rally around each other. They're try- you think they're making the comeback for their family, 
for House Stark. Spoiler alert, if anybody's not seen Game of Thrones by now Tony? and wants to. I'm sorry, not Tony. Not okay. Tony. No, no. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the family, the, the brutal, brutal massacre of, like, everyone left. Mm. It was just insanity. I mean... Was that... Is that the Red Wedding? The Red Wedding, yes, okay. absolutely, is what it was called. I think it was the I've end never of seen it, but I've heard two references. Three. It might have been season three. Shit, man, I remember, I like, Robin and I were watching Game of Thrones together, and then, like, we, she stayed up later than I did. I fell asleep early during this episode, and she watched it. I watched it alone the next day, and she was out somewhere, and I texted her, I'm like, holy shit, like, it just... I was just, I don't think anything, that might be the, the top for me as okay. far as a, mm -hmm. a death of a character in TV or movie. Um, like I said, the Mufasa thing always chokes me up every time, but sure. the, just the sheer shock of this and the way they just wiped out everyone, men, women, children, everybody, brutally beheaded, done, gone. Like the kids, their dogs, wow. everything, like just everyone. Wow. Gone. The one, uh, the, the, Pregnant woman beheaded just to make sure. I mean, the whole Good Lord. it was brutal, mm. brutal. So um, that one for me, like TV, I don't know it if was I just want like, you watching stuff like that, Nick. It, um, it did. It, it did it's some a things too violent. Yeah. I, I believe. I, I don't think I. I did. I, I. I had long bangs and painted my fingernails black for a solid two weeks after that episode. <laughs> I, I, knew I, that I went was through a phase. Happen. I went through a phase. I knew it. Yeah. I told you, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And another one that you mentioned that too that the Walking Dead series has done it a lot over the years. Yeah. So you get invested into a character, yeah, they, I, and all of a sudden they get killed by a zombie or right. something like that. It's just like wow, and it's just you, you and they get killed See, that, oftentimes by other humans. There was a character on there, Glenn. He was like one of the most beloved characters on. The is that show. The, the ball bat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Negan I, comes out, and it, what, the, the one season ended to where the, the villain had a, had a ball bat with wrapped in barbed wire. Okay, uh, and he had all these main. Main, all main characters on their knees. And he was doing like kind of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And the end of the Easy season. Tiger. So he didn't know how it was going <laughs> to, you know, who was going to get killed the next season. And then it, it, the next season started. And then he picked two, including Glenn. He's like, well, he's not really going to kill Glenn. Nope. Walked over and whew, clapped him over the head with a bat. And was like, oh my God, they killed. It was just, it was sh shocking. Yeah. So I'm uh, surprised every time they kill Kenny. <laughs> Again? <laughs> I'm, Again. I'm just, that was every episode. I'm my, just, my mom had yeah. a good one. She shouted. Did you guys? Uh, she asked if we remember the first five minute scene of Ghost Ship, the movie Ghost Ship. It is one of my favorite. It is scenes. a pretty. Is that? It's a are pretty you awesome. About death the, scene. The, the rope They're thing on the coming boat. down. Yep, and slight, and you don't oh even know it happened God. because the thing just whips, oh, wow. and, then everybody and everybody's just standing there still, off. and then yeah, they're just it different is angles. Amazing. And the, the shorter people, like heads, people that were sitting down, every yes. just right across, and people were. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. Nope. You need go. It, this spoils it, nothing. Stop like it's watch, the stop opening watching scene. Westerns. Yes. And rent Ghost Ship. I have it on DVD. Oh, wow. Actually, I have a DVD I have, player. I have it. I, I, know I can picture on, the cover. Is that the skull yeah. on the yeah. sail or something? And, yeah. And I know we're on film, but yeah. remind me to give you the um, that DVD of uh, Jojo Rabbit. Sure. I have okay. it. All right. So you got another one, video about Yeah. No. no well, we'll talk about one just, see, I should see it. So. Yes. Uh, just to go on what you were saying, and you both, um, Ozarks does the same thing. Okay. I'm, I'm in the middle of that. That's I true. I just finished season three. I'm about to start the beginning of the fourth. I still can't find it. I type in O Z A R K S. Now, Ozark does a good job of it, too. That's okay. Is that Jason what? So maybe similar. That's similar. one Jason Bateman, Ozark. Okay. Is there, is, is there, there, well, there's that one call, uh, show called Eat Shit. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Eat all the shit. Great death scenes. Death by suck. shit eating every time. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Ozark does have a lot of those moments where yes. it's like, like, oh my oh, God, I can't believe really? they just, right. when you finish the whole thing, we we'll, will, we'll talk we're, again because yeah. it's not over yet. You, you're, you don't yeah. watch it, do you? I, no, I haven't. Okay. I want to watch yeah. it, but I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's, I haven't been this in, invested in a, in a show since uh, Breaking Bad. So wow. well, it'd be a shame if I really told them how it ended, right here live, wouldn't it? it no, I, won't, I won't do that. Okay. <laughs> um, th th you don't know that that's how Ozarks ends. <laughs> you don't know that could be different. Don't let it ruin it. There's a reason your mom is is talking, <laughs> talking to, me to you and not me. and not you. Yeah, You're not a nice person. No, I know she. Yeah. All right. Okay. Your mom raised you wrong. That's the problem. <laughs> she raises me right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, can we talk about 
how tall Nick looks. <laughs> <laughs> With that chair, yeah. yeah. Well, if you have not met me in person, I am a towering six foot two in <laughs> regular life. So, yes. Yeah, come on to a live episode. And yeah, see right. Yeah, right. Before we get back like TVs or movies, mm -hmm. I had a comic book. Um, sure. W on Christmas morning uh, in is my Is this a Garfield stocking. thing? It is not. <laughs> Although Odie, when Nermal, when Odie was pushed off the table that last time, and yeah. they tricked Nermal into it. Actually, there was an episode of Odie, a uh, TV movie that made me uh, sad. Yeah. Uh, they took Odie away, and Garfield was sad. Anyways. Um, lasagna make it better? Nothing did. Until, Not even lasagna. Until he got him back. Not even mm. lasagna. He does care. He does. Okay. Uh, Superman is dead when Doomsday killed yes. him. Again, not an emotional thing, but like I remember reading it going... No, like I, I heard it was coming out, yeah. and here, but like to read it and to see at the very end, you're like, that, that can't be it, and it was. I mean, they brought it back into the whole thing, but still, the shockingness of that, yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Hmm. That's a good one. So that's my comic book. I had one comic book one. So no, that that's that's a good one. I got kind of a weird one here. I was, um, who framed Roger Rabbit? Okay, I've never seen until that movie. A cartoon, cartoon character boobs that made get you. killed. <laughs> no, but there was that scene where Christopher Lloyd took that shoe. Remember, he took that shoe. <clears throat> There's a cartoon shoe squeaking around, all happy and stuff like that. Oh yeah, he picked up that shoe yeah. and, and flipped open the 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 vat of that stuff, whatever yeah. it was called, and dipped that shoe. It was into like some it. type of toxic, like it was like turpentine. Yeah, did it make like it that. real? Oh, he or, ki yeah, yeah, killed yeah. it for real. Yeah. and mm -hmm. the shoe was like screaming, and I was like. Wow, they killed right. an animated it's been a cute. Long time I've seen that. Anyway, yeah, that was a kind of an odd one there, but that was a little shocking at the time. Well, I mean, if we're going cartoons, sure. um, I have on here. Um, you did Mufasa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ellie from Up. They oh, yeah. killed oh, yeah. the, the woman and made it like extremely sad in the first five minutes. That right. first five minutes of Up was yeah, like really right set the, the tone. Hell is You're going like, on? holy shit, this is what I'm about to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very sad. Yeah, I was definitely crying at that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a man, but I, yeah. you know, whatever. Uh -huh. you, know, you, you sure. do your thing. <laughs> I got, you know, one that gets me every time. Well, here's well, actually another animated one Bambi's mother. So watching sure, Bambi, sure. being in the movie, you know, dies But that's in a, a lot fire. like Mufasa, where yeah. it's the sadness is the, 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 the kid trying to wake up the parent. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, it's more of the trauma left behind by right. the death or whatever. It's, it's, it is sad, but. You know, you, you you haven't grown as attached to Bambi's mom or, you know, Mufasa, but you're, like, following that character, right. and it's just really sad I mean, to see a, a child-type character have to try to wrap their heads around. And luckily, we happened. don't have to wrap our heads around that, you know what I mean? And I right. think that watching that, yeah. you know, it kind of brings you into that moment. Yeah. yeah. One thing you two don't, definitely don't know how to do is kill a drink. Other than that, you know... <laughs> you're just trying to get my pants off, Dean. <laughs> I have one oh, that uh, is a sim similar kind of thing. It's more of the, the trauma of the child and the situation, but the death of the uh, stuffed bantha that belonged to Chewbacca's son in the holiday Star Wars, mm. uh, the the Life Day holiday special. <sighs> yeah, that's actually I, in my right now. And I do joke, I, again, but like up. I've said it before, more than any other moment in anything that has ever happened in Star Wars. Hits me like that does. Wow. It makes me so sad. The little baby Wookiee is stupid and ridiculous and what an abomination that Star Wars holiday special was. That scene makes me sad. You make me want to drink. Makes wow. me sad. Little baby Chew. And he, he goes and he picks because the stormtroopers raid his room and they just leave his room disheveled and his favorite little stuffed bantha, they rip the head right off and he picks it up and he picks up the head and he looks at it and he, Puts its head back on and lays it in bed and covers it up and hug. It's fucking awfully. It's sad. It's really fucking. Did either one of you have a stuffed animal growing up that you just like yeah. loved? That would be. I had a poo bear. I can't time. imagine if somebody yeah. decapitated my poo bear yeah. and I had to. That's just. That's just world ending. I would. Earth. Love, I would love to have shattering. stuffed animals. Yeah. Step putting your willy in it. <laughs> Here's your you stuff. stop fucking the stuffed animal. We'll get you one. Yeah, Till then. Dean got a lit cigarette in the back of the can every time he asked for a stuffed animal. <laughs> I told you. There you go. Go cuddle that. Take out the trash. That's right. Well-deserved. That's where I started interrupting. Well-deserved, for sure. 
I have another one. It's not. It's it's not a human character in the movie, but uh, it it's, it's just emotional. Every time I've seen the movie, when King Kong, any version of King mm. Kong, that when yeah, he, he doesn't dies, understand. He's just sad. he's uprooted from his homeland, thrown into New York City, and when he dies, and you know, and he's just sad, especially yeah, when you got sure. you know, the 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 Fay Ray character is there, and he's like, like old Yeller, even right? the original, yeah, yeah, like, old Yeller. There's, there's something there's something bad about like animals dying, right? They yeah. really, like you said, they don't know. They right. don't even the, if they get rabid like old Yeller, they don't know what they did, right? Right. If it's King Kong or even a bear, um, they're just protect. They're just doing what nature does, right? And our stupid asses come in and. Right. You know, kill and maim and humans are awful. Yeah. Yeah. Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Hey, Duffy feel All more six sorry foot for the... two of me. <laughs> the worst. You up there. You're awful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any others? I got I got yeah. more I'm gonna get I'm sure you got more I've, too. Go ahead, please. I have got um any of you watch uh Scrubs? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Brendan Fraser. Oh episode. yeah. Uh, he was Dr. Cox's friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and then JD got real close. Right, but the, but the, the... I mean, he'd been in a couple episodes, but the last one was he was walking around and kind of having fun and stuff, and they're getting ready for a speech or whatever. And at the end, you realize, because uh, the whole thing was Ben was waiting for his test results, come to realize that Ben was dead the whole time. Dr. Cox was imagining him following him around and the scene at the end when Zach Braff looks at uh, Dr. Cox and says and they're at the funeral Mm -hmm. and he goes do you even know where you are and and John C. McGinley when 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 he has that moment of clarity of like oh this isn't you know this he isn't he's dead like he has a moment that he's a thing I mean, that I mean, Scrubs yeah. can has yeah. a tendency of pulling the the heartstrings, but that episode there, yeah, that death there, when you when Doctor Cox, when John C. McGinley realizes that he's dead, beautiful writing, yeah, amazing, yeah, hmm. yeah. That show did a great job of kind of marrying, like playing really both in the comedy and like you yeah. said the emotional side, and I mean that they did that. Quite well, often, yeah. That was that was a good one. Um, you did uh, uh, Colonel Blake. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go on this one. Mm-hmm. Saving Private Ryan. Okay. That's it. Every death scene in Saving Private Ryan was heart wrenching. Obviously, yes. To me, yes. People say the Tom Hanks one, mm-hmm. where he's can't hear anymore. And he pulls him in and whispers to him, that's sad. To me, the most, and it's honestly, in t- movie history, to me, is the most disturbing death was when they're when they're in the um, tower, in one of the buildings, and they're fighting hand-to-hand, and the guy's got the knife about to plunge it into his chest. Do you remember that part? I never seen that. It's been a while since. And he's about to plunge in his chest, and they're looking at each other, spit is falling from the other guy's face and it's yeah COVID <laughs> a little before COVID <laughs> and and the guy the American that's being stabbed is asking because the other guy's saying something saying in German and he's pushing and he just all he's don't please don't do this please don't do this oh no no and you can inch by and, and like it's going so slowly into him and and you can if you listen to the scene you're hearing it go through the clothes first and then go th- and then the, the of, of going through the skin yeah. and all the whole time he's at begging him not to and then he's like what are you saying what are you saying because the guy's speaking in German I think he's saying something like calm down this will be done soon yeah but he doesn't know what he's saying so he's, he's just thinking of anything and he's trying to talk his way out of it because the guy's been kind of a jokester loudmouth of the whole movie and like just it's it's disturbing. It's Jesus. honestly one of the most disturbing deaths I've ever seen because it's so slow and so intimate. And then finally, it's in there, and you can you see the life, whatnot. It just 
it's a heart wrenching, but a beautiful scene. Like well acted. Yeah. Just yeah. But to me, the whole movie just is so every death scene is just heart wrenching. Steven Spielberg, I mean, at his best. Sure. Hmm. Um, I, I feel like it's my duty to, to relay the message. My mother wants to know why you're still wearing pants. Well, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, the answer is... Uh, uh, my Uncle Scott <clears throat> says uh, Mickey from Rocky. Is a, is a yes. Tough yeah. that, yep. There you go. Mickey was a tough one. And while you're talking about Rocky, Apollo Creed. Sure. Rocky IV. A total unnecessary Unnecessary. Death. You know, there's no, no reason it. they had to kill him. You know, and, nope. and Sylvester still even spoke on that. He said if he could go back and redo it, he, he wouldn't have killed him. They would have done something. Like it's made him, where at the end he yeah, could get, have been there in a wheelchair in the crowd. Exactly. Yeah, like a, a, um, a Major League Two where he's in the hockey. He could have been watching it from, you know, been like, oh, get him, Rock. You right. know, he, anything. Yeah. There was no need to kill him. But that was, that, that was like, I couldn't believe they killed him. I remember watching that movie for the first time. I'm like, did he just kill Apollo Creed? I couldn't believe it. And it made the sequel, the 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 director's cut. No, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, it, it was off. It, by the time I got to the the app, they'd taken it off, so I I, I can't uh, find it. Okay. Anyways, no, but um, Creed. Yeah. The, Creed two. It's hard to sit there; those two sitting across from each other at the, the table, yeah. going, "He literally killed your friend," and said, "Fuck it, I don't care." Right. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, if it would have been like, oh, he just beat him up real bad, you're like, okay, that's fighting and stuff. But, like, he killed your friend and had no repercussions. Right. So, yeah, that was problematic. Yeah, absolutely. You got another one? I mean, I have a few, but if we need to move on or whatnot. Do you guys ever see, um, again, let me press this with, um, I was moving into a new place and the... Cable was not installed, so we had nothing but DVDs. And uh, there was a box set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I had never seen it before. So I'm like, all right. I binged the whole thing, and I loved it. Yeah. I love the TV series Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think they're bringing it back. I think. Are they? I think. I think I heard that, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. But there's a there's a episode where her mother dies. Mm-hmm. But again... Like Jimmy Smith's, not by like a gunshot or a vampire. Mm-hmm. She had a brain tumor. Mm. And the beginning of the episode is, and the beauty of this episode, Josh Whedon did this episode, is there was no sound. It was a silent, no music. Like, mm. And you don't notice like how much like background music there is in TV shows until you don't have it. Sure. You know, when she, you know, Buffy goes in and tries to wake her up. And then when she calls 911 and she walks outside and sees a kid playing, two kids playing over here. And it's just all ambient noises. And you notice there's no music. And it's the um, the disconnect that Buffy's showing. That, you know, it, it, that's what it's driving, driving from is her disconnect from everything upon finding her mother. And knowing she's dead and had to tell her sister. I mean... It's a beautiful episode, hmm. but really well done. Okay. Only because of the fact, A, the actors, yes, but like with no music throughout the whole show. It, if you ever get a chance for whatever reason it would, it's a great episode to watch. Very good. Yes. Okay. What do you got? Uh, well, this is one of your and I's favorite movies on a tombstone. Mm. Oh, yeah. When Doc Holliday passes away at the end. It's sure. sad. The whole scene with him Our- and Wyatt, it's like, well, you know what's going to happen. It's just, to me, it's, it's just the whole scene of two guy friends. Are you saying that that's more sad than Morgan? When that's he's Morgan's holding him pr- and Morgan's the pretty blood sad. And, and like the, yeah. the, the, the torture. That is sad. You're right. That is pretty sad. Morgan was a shot, rough thing. Shot Morgan was uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. Doc Holliday was sad to watch. Yeah, that's that's better. Right. So, But it just the... It just it takes you to another level because it's he he knows he's dying and his friend is there with him and his friend has a chance to you know tell him what he means to him. It's just it's just I don't know. Just it gets me every time as a as a as a you know, thinking of a guy friendship because you don't see that a lot sure. necessarily in movies like yeah. that. But when they show that realism, 
But yeah, you're right. The Morgan's the Morgan scene is 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 very sad. In yeah, too, for sure. So my mom mentioned a good one here of uh, uh, the scene in Titanic when this when the ship is going down. Yeah. And there's the old couple that is just yeah. choosing to lay in their cot and hold right. each other as the water fills the thing. That's true. That was very very sad. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how you and I go out. Probably. Yeah. Holding Down each other some together. cruise yep. ship or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, I can see it. It'll be our 200th episode, folks. <laughs> Jesus, I hope it's not 200th that. episode going, going down with ship. the ship. Yeah, if we ever announce we're going to be on a cruise ship, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely tune in for that. If um, the ship doesn't go down, I'm just going to push them both overboard. <laughs> <laughs> and throw a, t- a, a, a door out there and go, yeah. only room for one. <laughs> No, clearly you could fit two people. No, nope. one. Yeah. Nope. You guys one. work it out. Oh shit! You know what? One I just thought of. Did you guys ever see? Shit! It was um, Justin Timberlake was in it. It was when he first started acting. Um, and Emil Hirsch, I believe, was in it too. Um, shit! What was that movie the, called? Oh, uh, the wardrobe malfunction. It's called. <laughs> no. Uh, was that where the, the kid had cancer? Um, in with the stars or no it was um this kid that got he got it was this kid that was trying to kind of find his way in high school and he got wrapped up in this group where the, they they I sold drugs remember. they were you yes. know they were like a gang basically yes. in like California and um, they I remember that talk him into doing something for them. they take him out of the, um, let me look it up real quick fill time while I, while I look right. this up. Um, I'm going to give you, you know. I'll give everybody an easy one, especially for this podcast, Han Solo. The yeah. shock yeah. Uh, and horror and disdain when, when, when you realize, oh, they just killed off Han Solo. Really? Was that your worst? I was going to ask that question in general. So, Obviously, we're all Star Wars fans. So, mm-hmm. was that your worst? No, Star Wars death. What was your worst Star Wars? The death? The worst Star Wars death was Princess Leia, and I say that because of the roar of Chewbacca when he finds out. Oh, sure, is yeah. devastating to me. Hmm. Yes, you see Luke disappear, and like that's just going fuck. That's bullshit. Fuck Ryan Johnson. But. The sadness in Chewbacca's roar, and I know that sounds silly, I get what I'm saying. <laughs> but, like, you take it upon the idea, when, as he's roaring, you're thinking to yourself, this, this is 40 years they've known him, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you take it into a character point of view, he's just lost his, his best friend, his best girlfriend. It's just, he's losing everything. And that final, just, bellow. Yeah. It... It it was kind of like when when they closed the doors in uh, Empire Strikes Back, when they closed the doors in Hoth. Um, oh yeah, when he just they, screams out, Han was outside. Right. Yeah. 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 It was like that, but like again, I get what I'm saying that it's a noise, a fake noise made by a a, a, a puppet. But it's a it's a it's a but creature it, missing his friend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it, it, it yeah. every time you're like, ah, oh, that sucks. For me, I wasn't bothered by the Han Solo one. I actually was like... Yeah, yeah. that was me. I was enjoying I was like, oh, it, God damn it because... No, I was enjoying it. I was like, yes. Because what I was watching in still in The Force Awakens is I'm like... I was digging the Kylo Ren vibe. I was digging the like where they were going with it. I liked the tie-in. And I liked that he was evil enough. Oh, you didn't want him to turn that back? I liked... Yeah, I liked that he was building into okay. this ultimate okay. pure evil thing. That he was willing to kill his own father. And when he... But also knowing the fact that, I mean, Harrison Ford was, you know, ready for it to happen. He die, wanted to be yeah. done with it. But, I mean, yes, it's sad to see the character go, but you knew this was coming at some point. Not like this, but sure. I was enjoying it because I was like, this is this is the bad guy. This is that menacing evil villain. Turns out he d- turned out to be a total, you know, I mean... You ain't gonna say it. I'm just, You're not just, allowed to say it. He was, he was a wuss. He, he was a wuss. wuss. He, right. turned out, he, right. he turned around and... I would like to circle back though. Alpha Dog is the movie I'm thinking Alpha of. I don't know Dog. if you guys saw it. That's okay. right. Yes. Yes. I did. But anyway, the, the, the moment's gone. But anyway, they, 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 well, there's, there's this banter. kid that they bring in, mm-hmm. and he's just trying to find someone, a crowd to fit in with, and they end up getting him to, you know, be a part of what they're doing, run some drugs for them, do some stuff. Well, they end up, I forget, they they have to, I forget what the reason was, but he these kids that he thinks are his friend, they take him out to a desert. And they're dig- he, when they get out there, 
they're digging a hole and he realizes slowly as everyone's coming in around him that they're going to kill him they're they're going to kill him and that hole is for him and he's crying and pleading mm. with them is that why you two invited me out to the desert later <laughs> right to the show it's a hole oh. digging contest Dean. oh it's a, boy yeah. no, the it's a hole castles. yeah but then you know next thing you know they clock him with the with the uh, shovel i think it was they had to fake a dead body or something and they just used him as like a a decoy basically like a, a to throw the, the cops off or whatever, but it was mm. very sad. He's, I mean, tears streaming down and his who face. Who was this? Was it uh, Emil Hirsch? The actor, I don't, it might have, no, Emil Hirsch was the leader of the gang, I think. Okay. And then this kid, I'm not sure who the actor was, but yeah, it was uh, just very, very raw and very just sad. I mean, he was, he was like a puppy dog that just, they were taken out to shoot him. And I mean, he just, but he knew it and he was just, it was horrible, horrible, so sad. Okay. I vaguely remember that movie. Yeah, I, it, it's not a hundred percent in my mind. Yeah, um, I have one. Um, one more Star Wars one for you. Oh yes, go ahead. Porkins. Is that the Rancor Pardon keeper? Me? Porkins. Remember that guy? Porkins. I, it's a joke. So it was, it was like the first <laughs> X-wing pilot, the, the fat guy in the X-wing. <laughs> oh, Porkins ejected, ejected. Uh, I got it. It blows up. Yeah, I think it was yeah. the first guy to get blown up in the X-wing. I think. Everybody. Is that right? I think so. I, I was so. I was thinking of the Raincore keeper because that was sad. It was he was so upset when the Raincore died. Yeah, he had such a bond with him. That was sad. I didn't know that that was sad. Porkins. Yeah, he was kind of upset. I mean, that was his whole fucking thing. And he just works at Jabba's palace with no shirt and a headdress, and he's just nothing else. But he's this right. Raincore is dead. Listen, what the fuck is he gonna do now? It was his pet. I was gonna tell, tell everybody listen next week uh, mm-hmm. for our discussion on the um, trailer for uh, Andor. Yeah, you know what? Did you watch it? I, I don't want to see now. the trailer. All right, so but you know what? I, but now that you mention that, though, all those characters in Rogue One was sure. sad. Yeah. Even the robot, all those characters dying at yeah. the end of Rogue One. Th- those Rogue two One holding like, each other is like yeah, a fire just oh, coming yeah. at them. Cow. Yeah. But I was sad. Like I said, when yeah. the robot died. But yeah, what? That's homework. Watch the trailer. Okay. okay. The trailer dropped, and it looks. I'm fantastic. still. I was gonna say. I'm. I look forward to. Uh, being drawn in, mm-hmm. hopefully, because I'm, I'm not super I think interested. It might be. Did right you now. like Rogue One? I did, and that's true. So, perfect example. Then case in point. You'll you'll get into the this. trailer for Rogue One. The premise of Rogue One. I'm like, I don't. Do we need to see this? I don't think I care. But I watched it because it was Star Wars. I'm like, right. that's mm-hmm. a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Really liked it. But uh, yeah, the bounty hunter in uh, the first season of The Mandalorian that sacrifices right. himself for them. Yeah. That's pretty sad too. That's right. The oh, it does um, a lot. It does. I guess the the way they're going to do and and I. We can hold this off next week. Yeah. We'll talk about Andor next week. Yeah. All right. I got one. Go ahead. Um, Tony Stark. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, at the end of the. Is that the? Yeah. That must. Is that that? To me, that's the saddest. Sure. Death in the Marvel Universe movies. And the mo- and the. How do I? It's not even like finding words. The finding the proper English. The most well done is that the best way to put that? Yeah, it was very yeah. heart wrenching, and then the funeral, and I read the. Something recently where they all those actors were actually in that scene at the fu- that funeral scene for Tony Stark. There oh, really? was no CGI, none of that really? stuff. They said it was the most one of the most difficult scenes to film because of scheduling and all that. If you think about that, that was all literally sure. all the characters yeah. that were alive. And they're all massive stars. See, there was and a couple that I would have really thought that was CGI. That looked CGI. But, yeah, no. They, huh. All right. Anyways, but you're right, just very Heartwarming. It was just the whole arc of that character yep. from where he started out. The the first couple, the first scene of Iron Man where he's, right. a, he's a you know jerk. It's it, all the way to that. It was fitting. Like it, it was a yeah. good ending. Yes. Quasi ending. Very. We'll powerful. see what happens coming up. I know the one that's going to make me cry when I see Wakanda Forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to. I don't know how sure. they're going to do it or what, Absolutely. but even just the one. Glimpse of the mural of him painted on the wall, and, and I'm like, God damn it! If I go. were to guess, they're gonna do that, and this fits into this because it's gonna be sure a death scene. Absolutely, is I believe it that how that's how the movie starts is and a you almost have to get funeral to, to start there to get it moving on. There's there, some yeah. there's a, something that yeah. tells you how. how. I mean, do you just say he got sick, or I mean you? I don't. No, yeah, I, I've not I heard. I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I don't think the character should die in battle that you don't see. 
You know um, what I mean? Yeah. I think it, it... I mean, why not do natural cause? You know what I mean? Why not say he just got sick? You don't have to say cancer they'll speak to what yeah it, it will be interesting to see how they maneuver that because like you said you just say he got sick he fought hard for the last x yeah. amount of time maybe they will you know what i mean just because they've said they're realistic. not they're not going to cgi him they're not no. going to do he won't be mm-hmm. in it so it's going to be interesting to see them maneuver their way around that i mean you're not going to please everybody with how you do it but i'm sure it'll probably be done very uh tastefully and and, and, and that trailer's fresh. coming out soon what's that uh, Wakanda. The, it's out. Yeah. Oh, it's out. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it came out uh, at San Diego Comic Con. So yeah. we'll we'll do that next week. Okay. You didn't listen to the last episode. Yeah, we, we talked, talked about, about that. that. You sure did. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, great one of one of the saddest <laughs> deaths in recent memory right. uh, has been our our viewers following falling from <laughs> ten to four. <laughs> we are down to four faithful few. And three of them are probably us on the street. Yeah, that's that's right. all right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and my mom. I bet my mom's there. Who's laughing? Bless her, bless her heart. It's got to be my mom. Bless Somebody her. laughed. I Somebody's there. Our, our own, our own yes. views count. Yeah. <laughs> Another one with the, from the Marvel Universe is uh, the, the recent Aunt May death. And Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, yes. hot Aunt May. Damn it, yeah, why? that was wrenching. God, Marissa Tomei, hot Aunt May. That was sad. Fuck. Yeah. I've seen that movie twice, and both times I'm like, it is, yeah, up. yep, you know, definitely well acted, and yeah, I agree. Okay, any other deaths? Do I have you want any to mention? other? Um, no, I, I I have one. I I don't think you guys ever saw it. It was a newer show. Um, uh, Zoe's extraordinary playlist. Oh, with the dad. Watch. Yes, oh, that was sad. You watched it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, not the whole, but I, I saw that episode. It and was I mean, well done. Just, just from watching the certain whole episodes. Series, it was only last one se- season, mm-hmm. but the whole season series or whatever, the dad had like uh, Lou Gehrig's type deal, mm-hmm. where like he was just, you know, in his yeah, and the death scene was he was hospice at home, and as the in her, her the whole premise of the show is. She saw people's feelings in song, mm-hmm. like, and she was watching. She stepped back and watched her family around her dad, and she and she saw her dad talking and singing with her goodbye. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a very, very yeah. well done. Yeah, it was really episode. beautiful. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. That's all I got for uh, deaths. I know there's probably a lot more that we missed. Uh, if you can think of them, comment below on whatever platform you're listening or watching. Yep. Very good. And if you're not watching us live, we're going to post this and you can comment later, certainly. So yeah. When we'll give you a shout out, a shout out on the show. So. Yep, there you go. Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, we've gone a bit. Yep. We have some topics for next week. It's weird too. that like doing this live it because is. typically we'll we take longer than this but we stop in between we take breaks and you know we take breaks and things like that and do different segments and things like that yeah. but um so this this has flown by rather quickly yeah. hey everybody gen x brian with millennial nick and zennial dean you know we need more people besides nick's mom watching us give us a like and subscribe <laughs>
great. 